Hi everyone, Ryan here from Fight Game Analysis, and today we are going to be talking about the fight that just wrapped up between Tyson Fury and Dillian White. But before we jump into that, if you've been enjoying the content, please go ahead and click on the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate your support. All right, so the fight just wrapped up, and we saw what I kind of expected and what a lot of people expected. We saw Tyson Fury come out there and dominate that fight from the first bell all the way until he ended the show in the sixth round. Beautiful shot, by the way. Absolutely extraordinary shot. Pitter pats with the jab a little bit, kind of blinds him and sets him up, and then just lands that ferocious uppercut. That's it. All she wrote. He's got that one punch power. Lights out. Right? Great performance by the champ. Look, I've said it going into this fight. I said it ever since we saw him dismantle Deontay Wilder at the end of their trilogy. Tyson Fury is the greatest heavyweight of his generation. Okay, he's gone out there and he's proven it time and time and time again. Goes out there, beats Klitschko, goes out there and dominates Deontay Wilder. Like I said, I gave him the three fights. At least on the official record, he got two of them by stoppage. Then he goes out there now and stops Dillian White in the sixth round and dominates the whole fight. Right, it was a little bit tricky at first, a little bit off. Dillian White comes out in that southpaw stance. He's, he's being a little bit of the aggressor. Tyson Fury's moving around on the outside of the ring. But even by the middle of the first round, we saw him start to find ways to land that right hand. Then he comes out in the second round, and that was kind of the beginning of what we saw for the rest of the fight. Both men eventually settle into their orthodox stance. Tyson Fury is just working that jab. And every time Dillian White comes tries to come in, every time he tries to get close to cover that gap, to close that distance, Tyson Fury is right there with that check left hook. Man, he had a beautiful check left hook that he controlled the distance with, controlled the action, used it to kind of stay safe, protect himself from the aggression that White, that White presented, allowed him to roll out the back door and kind of just reset and continue to work that jab. Stepped in with opportunities behind that right hand. Like, look, Dillian White got a few shots off, kind of landed some good right hands to the body and everything, but ultimately, this was another highlight performance. From Tyson Fury, man, it's what we come. To, it's what we come to expect after after in the post fight press conference, he praised his trainer, Sugar Hill Stewart. Right, he talked about how much he helped transform him from a guy who just used the pity pad jab, dancing around on the outside, big man, long reach, into a man who is the most feared puncher in the heavyweight division. Now, look, we think about Deontay Wilder. I mean, I, I, I know he said he's retired now, but we thought about him as the most feared puncher in the heavyweight division for a long time because the way he comes in there and delivers with that right hand, but. If, if we're going to talk about what we see in front of us, I mean, in a way, we got to think about that with Tyson Fury now. He's actually the biggest puncher. Why? Maybe not because he generates the most power on the bag, but because he's the guy who's going to go in there and get it done under all circumstances against all opponents before the fight ends. He's going to find a way to land a big shot and get you out of there. He's now done it a lot of times, proven he can do it against the shorter man, dancing from the outside, taking advantage of the opportunity. He was smothering Deontay Wilder and getting done, getting it done that way man just great performance all the way around there's really there's really not too much else that can be said other than now after he's able to go out there and just close the show in emphatic fashion he's in the post fight interview and he's asked the question that we all want to hear once again is this going to be it are you hanging up the gloves now are you said going into this fight that there was a very real chance you were going to walk away is it done and he tells us look i told my wife that after the Deontay Wilder trilogy, I was going to hang it up. But then I was just presented this opportunity to fight the homecoming in front of Wembley, in front of all my fans in the United Kingdom and make this, this massive fight and make it happen. I couldn't, I couldn't turn my back on it. I couldn't walk away. I had to do it. Now that it's done, I'm gone. There's no way I'm coming back. Wow. I mean, look, if that's really what he means, if he stays true to that statement, what a great send-off. What a great performance. I would personally like to see him come back. I still think he's in his prime. I still think he's ready to go. I, but I also don't see people out there who are really going to present too much of a problem for him at this time. Somebody would need to kind of step head and shoulders above the competition for us to really start to give him credit, really start to give him an, an, a chance to beat him. I mean, look, I'm as much a fan as Usyk is the next man. Alex, Alexander Usyk is a, is a beast, a highly skilled fighter. But after seeing what I saw tonight, it's like, is Usyk going to be enough? He's the much smaller man, both height-wise, reach-wise, weight-wise, because we know Tyson Fury understands how to use that rate, how to use that weight, how to get in there, how to wrap up the small guys, how to lean on them, how to wear them down with the punch that he's got now. Uh, look, I know, recency bias is one of the things that affects us all. So fresh coming off a performance like that from Tyson Fury, it's easy to say that he's going to go out there and smoke everybody. I go back and I watch the Usyk versus Joshua fight. It's easy for me to see how he could defeat this, defeat any taller man in front of him, figure out how to get inside and land that left hand because he's so skillful with it, right? 
I guess at the end of the day, it's a fight that I definitely want to see. I don't want to see Tyson Fury walk away from it right now when we see that fight on the horizon, right? But we still got to see what Usyk does in the rematch against Joshua. That's the one I'm looking forward to. I've, I've, I've said going into it that I think that he should be the favorite. It's going to be very difficult, I think, for Joshua to figure out how to... Uh, to fight for 12 rounds and how to beat a man like Usyk, right? He saw flashes of success in the first fight, but it's going to be tough over 12. So if Usyk, if Usyk prevails in that, you know, that that's what we would be talking about. Usyk versus Fury. Everybody else is kind of kind of a non-starter. You know, is that the fight that Fury will come back for? Is the pay going to be big enough? Is the, is the buzz going to be there? Does, does he want to get up for that fight one more time? I mean, I want him to, right? But, <laughs> but I'm not the guy who's got to go through it all. All the media and the obligations and the training camp and everything else. Look. If he walks away from it at this point, he's given us phenomenal performances um, up to and including this one tonight. Just goes out there and again, closes the show with it and shows us once again why, in my opinion, he is the greatest heavyweight of his generation. So let me know what you guys think. Did you think that it was going to be this? Look, it looked relatively easy for him out there. White never really presented any trouble. Did you think it was going to look like that? Did you think that White was going to be able to do something big? Or, or, or is this exactly what you expected? Did you just, just figure that he was going to come out there and constantly deliver the goods? And what's next for him? Do you want to see him walk away? Has he earned it? Or, as a fan, are you always just kind of greedy and hungry for that next performance from a man who does as good as him? Let me know what you guys think.